Hello Cloud Gurus, I'm Nigel Poulton and this is episode 3 of Kubernetes This Month. We'll follow our usual format of a quick review of the major news in our quick catch up section. Then we'll pick on one or two items and dive a bit deeper. Finally, we'll wrap things up with our Guru of the Month segment. So as always, grab a seat and enjoy. For this month's news, IBM finally closed out the deal on acquiring Red Hat. And that's important to us because Red Hat brings us enterprise-grade Kubernetes in the form of OpenShift. More on that in a minute. Sticking with enterprise-grade Kubernetes though, Docker Enterprise 3.0 is finally here. So having been in private beta for over 2,000 customers, it is now generally available. And this release, among other things, has a big focus on CNAVs, or Cloud Native Application Bundles. Switch into a couple of new products, but in the same space of trying to make Kubernetes easier for developers, Pivotal Application Service on Kubernetes, or PaaS, was announced as an alpha product. And IBM announced Carbonero, a platform that brings together Knative, Istio, and Tekton, as well as some new products, with the aim being to allow developers to deploy to Kubernetes without them actually having to know much about Kubernetes. Now, moving away from platforms, Kubernetes itself took a significant step towards better support for IPv6 clusters. Linkerd 2.4 was announced, we'll talk about that in a minute. There's a new Kubernetes Special Interests Group, or SIG, called SIG Usability, and as the name suggests, it is about making sure our experience as a Kubernetes user is as good as it can be. And wrapping up the news this month, there's been a bunch more talk, including an official blog from the Kubernetes website, making users aware of the upcoming API deprecations in Kubernetes 1.16. But we talked about that in last month's episode. So that about wraps up the news in the Kubernetes universe this month. So, Big Blue has finally completed the deal to buy Big Red? I don't know. But what I do know is that both IBM and Red Hat are major contributors to open source, and especially to Kubernetes. So there's obviously a ton of synergies and other buzzword stuff surrounding the deal. But I think it's important to understand that IBM intends to operate Red Hat as a distinct unit within IBM. Now, I'm not qualified to say exactly what that means, but I can tell you that it means Red Hat keeps its name and branding, it keeps its leadership team and things like corporate HQ and the likes, but for us, OpenShift should continue on its current path. I don't want to make too many assumptions here, so just in case you don't know, OpenShift is Red Hat's enterprise-grade Kubernetes for both on-prem and hybrid cloud users. So Kubernetes all nicely packaged and available with a support contract. I think, kind of like what Red Hat Linux was in the early days of Linux. So remember, if you didn't fancy compiling Linux from source, maybe you wanted Linux for mere mortals, yeah? Oh, and you know what? It'd be magic if you could pick up the phone and call someone when things went wrong. Well, Red Hat Linux was what you needed. And OpenShift isn't too dissimilar, just this time for Kubernetes. Anyway, IBM loves Kubernetes, Red Hat loves Kubernetes, and they are part of the same company now, and OpenShift marches on. Magic! On to Linkerd 2.4. So Linkerd is one of the leading players in the service mesh space, and it's an incubating CNCF project. But I think its biggest plus point is that it makes service mesh simple. Anyway, we just got version 2.4, which supports the service mesh interface spec, graduates support for an HA control plane from beta to GA, and it gives us traffic splitting. Traffic splitting and an HA control plane are both great and important features. Don't get me wrong, they really are. But the big one for me is the service mesh interface spec. I mean, this is what's going to drive adoption and make deploying and managing service meshes easier for you and me. So congrats to the folks at Linkerd. I mean, not only is this release hot off the heels of version 2.3 that brought us automatic MTLS, but the SMI spec itself that was only just announced a couple of months ago at KubeCon EU. So I think this shows us that the Linkerd team are really serious about the SMI. Finally, for our deeper dive this month, IPv6 clusters. Now, 
Most of us probably know that there's this shortage of IPv4 addresses and that IPv6 has been around since like, I don't know, about 20 years ago and it addresses this issue. Only it's never really been a thing, yeah? Like it's only now that the major cloud providers and the major apps are starting to offer support for it. And it's the same with Kubernetes. Now, Kubernetes has supported IPv6 in alpha since about version 1.9. Well, that's quite a while ago now and it's not progressed. Well, just this month it took a major step forward by passing conformance testing. So a massive congrats to the folks involved with that. And I mean, that sounds great, yeah? But what does it mean for you and me as Kubernetes users? Well, not a lot right now, but a major blocker has just been removed opening the way for beta and eventually GA support of IPv6 clusters and I guess even dual stack clusters where you're running some IPv4 and some IPv6. And on that note, let's finish up with our Guru of the Month segment. Last month's question was about where Kubernetes service objects get their list of healthy matching pods from and the answer was endpoints objects. So Every Kubernetes service, well at least the ones that have a label selector, get a corresponding endpoints object that is a list of healthy pods that match the service's label selector. And this month's winner is Bharat Chopra. Bharat is a subject matter expert from New Delhi in India. So, I mean, of course a huge thanks to everybody who got involved, but Bharat, you're our winner this month, so you'll be receiving a Guru of the Month swag bag, yes! This month's question is on the forum link on the screen now, and if you think you know the answer, get involved for a chance to win. And on that note, I'll see you next month, same cube time, same cube place.